When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about what kind of oxides can be produced by both nonmetals and metals. I looked at the periodic table in general, in terms of what kind of oxides they produce. What we're going to do in this video is come to the next stop point, which is quite related to the last stop point. It says, identify natural and industrial sources of sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen. So what we have to do for this stop point is identify, just means we have a name. We have to name sources, both natural and industrial, where sulfur dioxide comes from and where the oxides of nitrogen. So there's two different oxides of nitrogen. There was NO and NO2. So what I'll do first is I'll quickly talk about the air itself and what the air is actually made up of. So the air we breathe in. So imagine if we breathe in our air, we obviously know that quite a bit of our air must be oxygen because we need to have oxygen to survive. So 21% of that air is actually oxygen. And that's here, that those 21%. Now there is 78% of that is nitrogen. And you might not have thought that because we don't really often hear about nitrogen, but the mass majority of air we actually breathe in is nitrogen itself. And then the rest of it is, is the 1% is a combination of argon. So argon is about 1%. And carbon dioxide is a tiny bit. So carbon dioxide, CO2, makes up around 0.01%. Now, the usual forms oxygen comes in is actually O2, and the usual forms the nitrogen comes in is N2. We don't usually see much that is naturally found as NO, which is nitrogen monoxide, or of NO2, which is nitrogen dioxide. Oops, different color. And then sulfur dioxide is also only a tiny bit of this naturally in our environment. So these ones here that we talk about in this video make up a very small, a normally very, very small amount. So much smaller than 0.01%. The vast majority is oxygen in its normal state and nitrogen in its normal molecular state of N2. But what I'll do now is I'll go over the first one. It says identify the natural and industrial sources of sulfur dioxide. I'll start with sulfur dioxide. Remember sulfur dioxide, which simply was sulfur, and we had an O2 at the end. And if you remember last week, we said that sulfur dioxide being a nonmetal and having a relatively high oxidation state for its sulfur is actually acidic. So if this comes in contact with water, it becomes acid rain. But we'll go over that in a different video. But here are some of the ways that it can naturally be produced. We have first we cover natural ways. We've got bacterial decomposition. And what that is, is simply bacteria feeding on living things that have died, like past living things. So bacteria feeding off remains. And in the process, they produce some of the SO2. So this SO2 gets produced in, as they do, go through this procedure. And that produces about 50% of this, the SO2, so the sulfur dioxide in our atmosphere, is produced through bacterial decomposition. Now, another way it can naturally be produced is for these volcanic eruptions. If we have a look at the picture next to next to that volcanic eruption here, is we've got a volcanic eruption, so we've got that ash which has come up, and most of that ash is actually made up of these different compounds. And the most important ones, obviously, that I want to focus on are SO2, which is sulfur dioxide and CO2, which is carbon dioxide. So these are both pollutants and they can occur naturally for volcanic eruptions. So these were the two points for the natural when it comes to how sulfur dioxide can be produced. And for the industrial, we've got the burning of coal and the combustion of fuel. I'm just going to put that as one and I'll explain why as well. So if you can imagine, let's say I make a, have a piece of coal here, and the mass majority of that coal will be made up of something called CHs, and that was your hydrocarbons. So just carbon bonded with hydrogen. That's the vast majority of this, but a tiny bit of it. So maybe about, usually about only about two or 3%, sometimes even less, of the coal is made up of this here, which is iron, 
iron disulfur, FeS2. Now, when we combust this, so for example, we burn coal, and obviously the reasons why we might burn coal could be due to electricity, so a coal p a power plant, or and the reason why we couldn't combust fuel, that could be obviously to fuel our cars, to have cars be able to move. So we combust fuel for cars, amongst other things, and we burn coal often to produce electricity. But both of these are examples of fossil fuels. And as I mentioned, these, these fossil fuels are mostly hydrocarbons, which were the CH bonds, but some of it is this iron disulfate. And if we combust this, we release not just the, the hydro, this here, which produces carbon dioxide, but we also release some of this sulfur. And this is the actual chemical reaction. You don't need to remember for this dot point, but you actually need to remember it for the next dot point. I'll just go over the actual chemical reaction. So we have iron disulfate. We react with oxygen in the atmosphere. That produces two di-iron trioxides, but it also produces this here, which is what we want. We don't want, but we want for this dot point. And that is our sulfur dioxide. And sulfur dioxide is obviously not good, and we will go over that in the future videos, but it produces acid rain amongst other things. So that was one reason, the, the burning of coal and the combustion of fuels, so the burning of fossil fuels. And another way we can produce sulfur dioxide is through metal smelters. And I'll go over that also next video, and that's to do with having copper, having a copper mineral that is not pure copper, so what we do is we smelt that in a, like a smelter in a high temperature furnace, and then we produce a copper. But as a byproduct, we also produce the sulfur dioxide. So these were the two ways we can produce it, burning of coal or combustion of fuel, and using metal smelters, which is just making metal itself. And the next point is not actually related to this dot point. This was just how we produce sulfur trioxide. The dot point is not asking us to do this, but we'll go over it in, in, in a different video as well. But uh, if we have the oxidation of SO2, so if we actually add, so oxidation means we add oxygen. If we add oxygen to sulfur trioxide, we produce sulfur, if we add oxygen to sulfur dioxide, we produce sulfur trioxide, which is even more dangerous. But we go over that in a different video. So for this video, you should know the two different ways naturally we produce sulfur dioxide, and two ways we can industrially produce sulfur dioxide. Now, when it comes to the oxides of nitrogen, remember there's two different oxides. There was NO and NO2. NO was nitrogen monoxide, and on NO2 was nitrogen dioxide. And remember from the last video, nitrogen monoxide was actually neutral. It was not acidic, even though it was non-metal. That was because it had a low oxidation number. So I'll just write low oxidation ON for oxidation number. Whereas nitrogen dioxide was acidic, acidic oxide because it had a higher oxidation number. But it gets it kept produced in the main way when it comes to naturally for lightning storms. And what you can imagine is we have lots of these N2 molecules. As I mentioned earlier, 78% of our atmosphere is nitrogen as a gas. And we also have a lot of oxygen. So about 21% of our air is oxygen. Now these are usually always floating around together, they're both gases there in our air, but nothing happens. But if we have a lightning storm, so I'm just going to draw actual lightning, so this is meant to be a lightning. Lightning produces lots of energy, so what you can imagine is energy is so strong that what it does it actually breaks these bonds between nitrogen and oxygens and forms these new molecules which are called nitrogen oxide. And these nitrogen oxides are problematic because they themselves are harmful, but they can also produce nitrogen dioxide. But this was the, the natural way for lightning storms because that energy breaks the bonds between nitrogen and oxygen and produce nitrogen, di nitrogen oxide. Now the industrial way is, is the combustion of fuel. And for the same reason that I mentioned the, the lightning storm, the combustion of fuel, what it does, it has the nitrogen and oxygen in the air, which is always in the air itself. But if we combust fuel, what we do is we produce lots of heat. And that heat from the combustion chamber, from the engine itself, so the heat changes it and makes it into nitrogen, dioxide, nitrogen monoxide. Right, so same reason why lightning produces nitrogen monoxide is the reason why our fuel, when it combusts in our cars, produces nitrogen monoxide, because that energy changes the actual configuration and makes monoxide. Now how do we produce NO2? 
and we actually for this dot point we do need to know how NO2 get, can get reproduced because it's saying we should talk about the oxides of nitrogen, so not just nitrogen monoxide but nitrogen dioxide as well, and that's for the oxidation of nitrogen oxide. And again, what I mean by oxidation is the adding of oxygen. And I will go over the actual chemical equation in the next video. But what this means is that we add an oxygen molecule into NO2 and go from NO2 into, into from NO, so nitrogen monoxide, into NO2, nitrogen dioxide. And that gets, that happens in the air itself. That's just natural. If we have lots of nitrogen monoxide, then nitrogen dioxide will automatically be produced. And then another way that we can produce nitrogen monoxide is just generally for industrial and oil refining sources. So by refining oil, which happens on a large basis, we also produce some of our nitrogen monoxide. But by 86% of all the nitrogen monoxide that we emit comes from this combustion of fuels, so the vast majority. It's only a tiny portion or comparatively speaking, a tiny amount comes from the oil refining process. The vast majority comes from the combustion of fuel in our cars. So I'll quickly go over the main points again. So identify natural and conductual sources of sulfur dioxide. The natural ones were bacterial decomposition and volcanic eruptions. The industrial ones were the burning of coal and the combustion of fuel. And using metal smelters that also produce sulfur dioxide. Now, when it comes to natural and industrial sources of the oxides of nitrogen. We had two oxides. We had nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide. Natural sources of nitrogen monoxide were lightning storms. And the industrial sources were the combustion of fuel, 86%. And the rest of it, the tiny amount that remains, were the, was the oil refining processes in general. And also we've got the oxidation of NO2, so of NO, so of nitrogen monoxide to NO2, and this just occurs in the air after we've produced all that nitrogen monoxide initially. Then we can, by, by accident, by mistake almost, produce nitrogen dioxide, which is acidic. Hopefully it was useful. Thank you for watching.